All right, so today in your notes, you're going to be talking about properties, algebraic properties, and we're going to be focusing on properties of real numbers and the properties of uh, the properties of equality. So what I want you to do first is I want you to take a second, pause the video, and I want you to go through and I want you to write down each of these in your notebook. So go ahead and write down each one of these that you see up here on the board, and I want you to write those down in your notebook so that you have those to go back over. All right, there should be a total of nine. So go ahead and write down all nine of those and take notes on this chart. All right, so now that, you're, now that you're done looking at the chart, I want you to go through and I want you to kind of focus on a few of these. So for the associative property of addition, what we're looking at there is we're looking at how we associate numbers in a, in a, in a problem. So here they give us the numbers 2, 5, and 6. So what they say here is that we can either add 5 and 6 first or 2 and 5. When it's addition or subtraction, it doesn't matter which ones we add first in that case. We just have to pick, basically pick a set and then we can move our parentheses around. So with associative property, we're grouping. We're grouping the numbers to figure out what the sum is. The next one was commutative property of addition. With commutative, we're looking to move the numbers or move two numbers in a way that it doesn't matter which way we add them, we're still going to get the same sum. So the example for this one was 2 plus 7 is equal to 7 plus 2. We know that when we add those two numbers together, it doesn't change the sum, no matter how we add it. The next one is the additive property, the additive identity property of zero. And all this one states is that anytime we add a number to zero, we get that number. So like 12 plus zero is 12. We could have 11 plus zero is 11, all right? 10 plus zero is 10. So with identity, we're looking for the same identity. The <laughs> additive inverse or the existence of additive inverse, that all that means is that when we add a number or we add two numbers together, the opposite of it is equal to zero. So in this case, that would be like saying 15 plus negative 15 is equal to zero. All right, so whenever we take a number and add it to its negative cell, we get zero. After that, we have the associative property of multiplication. The associative property of multiplication just basically states the same thing as the associative property of addition. The only difference here is that now we're grouping numbers that are being multiplied. So here we have 3 times 4 times 2. So what this property says is that we can either multiply 4 times 2, or we can multiply 3 times 4, and we're still going to get the same answer once we multiply those out. The commutative property of multiplication, that's going to be the property in which we have 3 times x, and we can swap that around and say or 3 times 7 is the same thing as 7 times 3. We know that no matter which way we multiply those two numbers, we're still going to get the same answer once we solve the equation. After that, we have the multiplicative identity property of 1. Here, the product of a number and 1 is the same number. So basically, this is a number times 1 is always itself. So in this case, 9 times 1 is always equal to 9. 10 times 1 would always be equal to 10. 5 times 1 would always be equal to 5. So when we multiply a number times 1, we're going to get itself. Next, we have the existence of multiplicative inverse. So in this one, it says the property of a number 0 and its reciprocal is 1. So with this one, we're saying basically that if we have 3, the reciprocal is when we flip that number. So if we flip 3 over 1, we get a fraction of 1 third. So 3 times 1 third will always give us 1. So basically, if we had a number, you can take the number 10. The number 10, if you flip the number 10, that's going to be 10 times 1 10, and that's always going to give us 1. And then the last property here is probably the one you're most familiar with. That's the distributive property of multiplication over addition. And all this one states is that when multiplying a number by a sum, the number can be multiplied by each term in the sum. So this is basically distributive property. If you have 2 times 3 plus 5, we know that we can say 2 times 3 and 2 times 5. So with distributive property, we're pretty good with that one. We use that one most, almost every day. All right, so next we have the properties of equality. Okay, now these are properties of equality. These are what we've been working with in class and are pretty easy to work with for the most part. There's only going to be a few that we're going to focus on here, but you need to know all of these in order to be able or know all of these for the test. So the first one we're going to start with, and you can go ahead, actually go ahead and pause the video and write these down so that you have a chance to look at them, and then we'll go over them after you copy them down. 
All right, welcome back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through each one of these and we're going to talk about them. So we'll start up at the top with the reflexive property of equality. All right, so with the reflexive property of equality, it says that any number is equal to itself. That's pretty basic. If I have 19, 19 is the same thing as 19. Those two numbers are equal to each other, so that's what we call the reflexive property. The symmetric property is a equation or an equation may be written in the opposite order. So what we can say here is that x is equal to 7 and 7 is equal to x. A lot of times this happens to us whenever the variable we're calling for is on the opposite side. So what we'll do is like if it says 7 equals x, we'll take and flip it around so that it says x equals 7. And that's what we call the symmetric property. The transitive property of equality, that one basically states that two quantities are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. So if A is equal to 9 and B is equal to 9, then we know A is equal to B. So if two numbers are, or two letters are equal to the same quantity, then we know that those two are equal to each other. That one we don't use a whole lot in our day-to-day -day work with two-step equations. Now the next ones are going to be probably the most important ones that you'll see. And that's going to be these down through here. Those are going to be important. So with these, we have the addition property of equality. So this is when we basically add the number on the same side. This is going to be your inverse operations for your two-step equations. So when I say I have x minus 9 equals 3, and I take and say, oh, I've got minus 9, so I need to add that to both sides, that's what we call the addition property of equality. So the same number can be added to both sides of an equation. And then it gives you an example where a is equal to 16. Then it says a is a plus 3 is equal to 6 plus 3, so we add 3 on both sides to move that over. Next, we have the subtraction property of equality, so that's going to be when we subtract the same number from both sides of the equation. So in this one, if we had a equals 9, then subtracting 5 from both sides would be something we could do calling the subtraction property of equality. Next, we have the multiplication property of equality, which is when we multiply both sides by the same number. So that's when we take and multiply both sides times the same number. And then the last one is the division property of equality. And this is when we divide both sides by a non-zero number. Okay, so this is when we divide both sides by the same number. And then the last one down here at the bottom, and we'll move on after this one, is the substitution property of equality. So this one says that a number may be substituted for its equal in any expression. So if we had a equals 90 and b equals 90, then we could say that a is equal to b. So what that means is that if we substitute a number in or plug a number into an equation, the substitution property of equality is what we're doing. All right, so with that being said, that's going to cover our properties of equality. So let's look at a couple examples of how we would apply this into our practice. So <clears throat> let's look at two examples. We're going to start off with an easy example, and you can write this one down. This is going to be 2x minus 12 is equal to 8. Now, first off, let's just go ahead and solve this problem for x, because we should be good with two-step equations by now as much as we've been doing it. So let's just check it out and see what we get. So the first thing we're going to do here, we're given this problem, right? So the first thing we need to do is what? Add 12. Add 12 on both sides. So we're going to add 12 on both sides. The 12s are going to cancel out. We're going to get 2x is equal to 12, 8 plus 12 is going to be 20. Alright, now once we get 2x equals 20, we're then going to do what? Divide. Divide. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. 2's cancel out. We're going to get x equals 10. Alright, so pretty easy problem. We worked that out, we went through it, and we said everything that we needed to do as we went. So now let's go back and kind of justify this. Let's talk about how we would justify the steps in this. So like I said, the first thing we had was a problem given to us. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out here to the side and we're going to label this as given. Alright, so we had a problem given to us. Now the next step in our problem was to do what? Alright, not subtract both sides. Add both sides. So here we wanted to add on both sides, add 12 to both sides. So the property that works for this, we just talked about it, is that when we add a number on both sides, that's called the addition. Property of equality. And I like, I like to abbreviate property of equality, POE. 
So the addition property of equality. Now, once we added those together, we combined our terms there. We went ahead and added everything together. We came on down. And then the next step for this was to do what? Divide. Divide on both sides. So if the when we add on both sides, that's addition property of equality. What do you think it is when we divide on both sides? There we go. Division. Property of equality. And then we got to our answer. So with this being said, we were given a problem. We used addition property of equality to solve that. And then we simplified the rest of it using the division property of equality. So it's basically two steps, right? We call this a two-step problem. This is why we call it a two-step problem, because how many steps do we have here? Two. Okay? So that's why I identified it as a two-step problem. Now, let's get a little more complicated. Let's work what we worked in yesterday into this. So yesterday, we talked about literal equations. So let's look at a literal equation problem from yesterday's work, one that we actually looked at just a few minutes ago. So let's look at AX plus BY is equal to C. And for this problem, let's go ahead and solve for this Y. Okay, we're going to isolate this Y. So if we wanted to isolate that Y, first thing we would do here, first off, we're given this problem. So next we would do what? Okay, we can't divide because we want to get rid of something else. Subtract the AX from both sides. So we're going to subtract AX from both sides. And then we're going to be left with BY is equal to C minus AX. All right. So once we get to this point, how do we get rid of the Y or a B? Divide both sides by B. So we divide both sides by B. The B's cancel out. And we're going to get an answer of Y equals C minus AX divided by B. All right, so once we get to our answer, we can now kind of go back and look at our property, see what we did here. So starting up at the top, first thing, we were given a problem. So we need to write what out beside the problem? Given. After that, we did what on both sides? Okay, so that's going to be what property? Subtraction property of equality. After that, we then did what? Divide. Divided, so that's going to be the division property of equality. All right, and then we solve for our final answer. What if we got down here and we had to flip this answer around? What if we had to turn this answer around? So say we got down here to the bottom and we needed to say C minus AX divided by B is equal to Y. All right, we just flipped it around. So when we flip something around, it's the same on both sides. So this is what we call the symmetric property of equality. So sometimes we'll need to use that symmetric property of equality when we're at this point and we need to change it into this. Okay? So anytime we use the symmetric property of equality, all we do is flip our variables around or flip our, flip our numbers and variables around to the other side. All right. So go ahead. Once you're finished with this, if you need to rewind it, you can go back and watch any of the information that we covered. But for the most part, that's going to be your notes for today. So go ahead and take some time, look over these and complete the assignment.